I'm just about to reveal how you guys can make thousands of dollars online by just re-uploading content on your social media. So let's get started. And the first thing we need to understand here is the concept of fair use. Because this will allow you to repost other people's content by adding your own unique contribution so that you can still get paid without getting any sort of copyright related issues. Your channel will not get taken down, your page is not going to get in trouble. That's what we're going to be focusing on. So here's an important distinction we need to make. If I were to just re-upload other people's videos on my YouTube channel, that would get me in trouble. That would get my YouTube channel closer to deletion, which is not something I want. And so guys, you want to stay away from that. But in this video, I'm going to simplify things for you. And for that matter, we're just going to use two different platforms. The first one of them is TikTok, and the second one of them is, you guessed it, YouTube. But now, we got to understand which of these platforms is better for sourcing content, and which one of them is better for posting content on? And that question is not too difficult to answer. If we dive a little bit deeper and try to understand what's going on behind the scenes, we can quickly discover that TikTok is not the most generous platform. It only pays between 2 and 4 cents to their content creators for 1,000 views, and that is a terrible RPM. It's simply not worth it. It literally means that you need to get a million views to make 20 to $40, which is a total waste of your time. Now, truth be told, the TikTok algorithm favors anyone. So if your content is good, they will give it a fair chance of getting viral and getting more views. But still, $20 to $40 for a million views, that is a waste of time. In comparison, according to this article on renderforest.com, the average CPM or cost per mill ranges from $0.5 to $6 on YouTube based on the location of your viewers. Now, there are a few mistakes here. First off, they are talking about the RPM, not the CPM, which is basically the revenue per 1,000 views. Not only that, but it can be significantly higher than $6. And let me show you a few different examples of that just to confirm. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you a really silly example. You see, a while ago, I posted this video about making money on Amazon by selling coloring books. And I'm not even kidding. That's what the video is about. It's a pretty interesting way to make money online, to be honest. It's not that difficult. But here's something even more interesting than that. If I go over to the analytics, here's what happens. Well, take a look at the metrics here. The RPM for this video, which is the amount I received for 1,000 views, was $25. That's significantly higher than six. And that just goes to show that there are certain topics out there that will pay you a lot of money. But generally speaking, if you're not focusing on Amazon or dropshipping or some of these subjects, then you can expect five to $10 for 1,000 views. There are a lot of different factors to take into account, but at the end of the day, YouTube pays a lot more than TikTok, and that is without a shadow of a doubt. But now guys, I do understand that some of you may not be comfortable with showing your face in front of the camera like I am doing right now and talking to the camera, trying to script the videos, trying to record them and edit and all that stuff. I know that's something that some of you do not have the time to do. So if you want to take a shortcut, if you want to repurpose other people's content in order to make money online by reposting on social media, take a look at this channel. And they've done it masterfully. This guy right here is a genius. The channel is called Dylan Anderson. He's got close to 4 million subscribers, and I'm pretty sure he's gonna hit that target very soon. And here's what he's doing. He's basically sourcing all of his videos from TikTok. We're talking about viral videos, very cool ones, that are getting millions of views on TikTok. And instead of just reposting them, which is not allowed, he adds a commentary. So he watches the videos all the way through, he takes a look at some of the comments, he might also do a little bit of research regarding the backstory of that video if he wants to, and then he simply adds a commentary to the video. So let me show you an example of that. As you can see, this is just a regular commentary. He's describing exactly what's going on there. So he's not trying to be funny, he's not necessarily trying to be engaging or get a certain type of emotion from people, he's just narrating what's going on in the video. And that was enough to generate over 200,000 likes on this specific clip. But this is not an isolated case. If we take a look at most of his uploads, the majority of them get over 1 million views. Some of them go absolutely viral. And that's because this is a genius strategy. These videos have already performed on TikTok or even YouTube. They are proven to work. They've already got a lot of engagement. So the videos are good. And just by adding a commentary, he takes full advantage of a fair use policy which allows him to repost these videos and still get paid. Now, another example that is just a little bit more established, he's been around for a little bit longer, 
is Aussie Man Reviews, but he's got a different take. Instead of providing a generic commentary, he's genuinely funny. It is exactly for his commentary that people watch the videos, not necessarily for the videos themselves. But this is a lot harder to replicate. You cannot just be funny on command. I think that's something that you either have or you don't. So you cannot really train it. If you're not a natural and you don't want to make a fool of yourself by trying to be funny if you're not, then I would suggest that you stay away from this and just keep things simple and follow Dylan's strategy, which is a lot more straightforward. Now, to be entirely truthful, to give you the full picture here, the way you get paid with YouTube Shorts is a little bit different than the way you get paid on YouTube with long videos. If you're posting these longer clips like I am, you can basically place ads on your clips and get paid by ad revenue. Advertisers will pay in order to get in front of your subscribers and YouTube gives you about 55% of whatever advertisers pay. It's a fairly simple process, there's nothing complicated, nothing shady about it, and it simply works. But when it comes to YouTube Shorts, you cannot really display ads on a 10 second long video. And that's why YouTube has a different way of monetizing that content. So let's dive a little bit deeper. Let me introduce you to the YouTube Shorts Fund. This is a $100 million fund to reward creators for their dedication to making creative original shorts that delight the YouTube community. Now, when it comes to the requirements here, there's a whole list, but most of them are really easy to pass. Your channel needs to have uploaded at least one eligible short in the last half a year. You need to abide by YouTube's community guidelines and the copyright rules as well and this is a tricky one, and your channels must upload original content. Now, at a first glance by reading this, you might think that Dylan Anderson here is not monetized because he's not necessarily posting original content. I mean, he's not recording these videos himself, but you would be wrong. Let me show you a very cool trick. If you want to find out if a channel is monetized on YouTube or not, all you got to do is right click on that page and click on inspect. And that will basically open the source code of that page. Alternatively, you can just press Ctrl and U on your keyboard and that's going to open all the code in a new page. Now, up next, you want to search for the term monetization. And once you do that, this line of code right here will tell you whether or not a page or a YouTube channel for that matter is monetized. If the value is true, it goes without saying that channel is making money. And as you can see, when it comes to Dylan Anderson, that is true. Just to show you the difference between a page that's actually monetized and one that is not, let me find a page that doesn't actually make any money. I'm sure you guys are somewhat familiar with meditation videos. This is a pretty popular topic, especially in the YouTube automation space. And a lot of people are trying to make money on YouTube by re-uploading meditation music. But as we've just determined in previous videos, it doesn't really work unless you're monetizing that channel with some affiliate marketing or something of that kind. It's really tricky to monetize this sort of channels. So let's just pick one of them at random. This one, for instance, has got over 1,000 subscribers, which is one of the requirements in order to get monetized. And let's check it out. I'm going to press Ctrl U and then search for monetization. And as you can see in this case, monetization is false. So there you have it. Some channels get monetized on YouTube, others don't. And I'm sure that is not news to you. But if you want to make sure that you're on the right side when it comes to monetization, you need to pay close attention to fair use policy. And for that matter, I personally believe that the easiest way you can make money by re-uploading content on social media is by following the example of Dylan Anderson. But again, this is just one example. There are other ways out there too, but I want to keep things very simple and straightforward so that you can actually take this piece of advice and implement it. For instance, there's something else that you can do which requires a little bit more effort. Talking about reaction videos and even Mr. Beast has a channel centered around that, where he's just reacting to popular videos online. And he's posting quite frequently too, because his videos are a little bit easier to create than his bigger projects, as you might expect. And it doesn't take a lot. I mean, if you can provide the genuinely funny or interesting or engaging commentary so that you can add some value to the video, so you can record yourself while reacting to that piece of content. But again, if you want this to work, your commentary needs to be engaging. You gotta give people a reason to watch your video and not the original one. And it's a little bit more difficult. But at the end of the day, I hope that you now understand what kind of content gets monetized online. And you can take this information and put it into practice. You've got all the resources you need to make it work. So that's it for now and thanks for watching.